Hello world, welcome to the 99th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the second video in my machine learning playlist, and today we're going to discuss whether machine learning can really predict stock market prices. So recently, YouTube recommended this awesome video titled Stock Price Prediction Using Python and Machine Learning by Computer Science. And so the subject of the video was Apple stock, and I've been a longtime Apple shareholder. So I'll leave a link in the description to his video. Please check it out. It's really good. Uh, the date range he used in the video was January 1st, 2012 to December 17th. 2019 a couple days before he published the video so I thought it would be a good experiment to test the code using current data especially with Apple's huge rise recently as you can see here this large rise and then the recent 20% or more correction which is right here and so uh, I watched his video and I um, extracted the code minus all the print statements so we won't really be going through the code per se but feel free to pause my video and check out uh, the code but I really recommend his videos so we'll start off in our Jupyter notebook again and uh, please watch the first video in this playlist to learn why I'm using a Jupyter notebook instead of PyCharm by clicking the card here and again all the credit goes to the computer uh, computer science YouTube channel for the code so the um, just be aware that as you watch my code and maybe go back and forth between his video the numbers of Apple's prices will be different because of re Apple's recent four to one um, recent uh, stock split so just be aware so let's go over some of the machine learning code uh, principles used here first so I'm going to copy and paste up to where we're going to train our model into my Jupyter notebook and let me comment this out and you're going to see some basic libraries but then you're going to see this import min max scalar from sklearn from Keras you're going to see sequential dense and LSTM LSTM will be the neural network that um, we show off here and that's what uh, computer science used in his video. So let's go through some of those principles just in case you're not too familiar with machine learning. So the first one is uh, a min-max scalar and you'll see inverted scaling often in the code. And the reason why is because um, you know you can't test every single part of the code and when you use several small data sets like at Messenger, here, you could have a large loss rate. So with this inverted scaling right here, you have a uh, less loss rate than if you were to uh, use a constant uh, learning rate down here. So, um, so that's what we do right here. Uh, yeah, so it, it gets better with uh, larger data sets, but if you don't have the computer, uh, to do it, then it's best you use this uh, um, inverted learning scale. So the next one is why are we using what is an LSTM neural network and why are we using it for stock market prices? Well, this stands for long and short term memory, um, which is a recurrent neural network capable of learning order dependence in sequence prediction problems. So um, that makes sense for stock markets in my mind because you know, um, it's going to learn the order of dependence from each day in our sample to predict what's going to happen in the future. And I'll discuss why I think that's problematic um, when we get through the code. But before we can do this LSTM, we have to create the model. And to do that, we're going to import this sequential, which is for initializing the neural network. Uh, we don't use dropout in this one, but we will use dense layers and we will use the LSTM and you'll see that in the code. Um, so go ahead and watch his video. Link is in the description 
and he, he can explain it a little better. All right. So uh, I'm not going to go through this code too much, but feel free to pause it if you need to. And what we're going to do is take a code from um, Apple stock prices from 1 January 2012 to uh, the day of the video that he published, which was 17 December or December 17, 2019. So we're going to train the model real quick and I want to show you what that looks like. So we're going to run this. Okay. And then it should open up a uh, model training right here. So this is um, three minutes and I will cut, but um, just wanted to show you what it looks like when the model starts. Okay, so we have now trained our model and we have a TensorFlow object now. And uh, so now that it's finished, let's display his results and see what um, we were able to get. So I'm going to copy and paste the rest of his code. And we're going to show the difference between the predictions and the actual uh, prices using the model to create the predictions. So this is the chart. Again, the prices have changed because of the uh, recent stock split. So as you can see, um, this right here is the training data, the blue. So these are the actual values, the closing prices. This red is the actual valid closing prices. And this yellow is predictions. And um, I've seen this often with uh, machine learning is that it um, tends to not track the highest of highs and the lowest of lows and that's probably because it's using more of an average system okay so uh, as you can see it went a little lower apple went lower than what the prediction said and it went higher in many cases all right and so i would just caution if you're not familiar with how stock markets move right it's not an efficient process these are people and machines trading with each other in an irrational state so what uh, the common term is for stock market investors is past performance in terms of the stock price not the company past stock movements does not indicate future stock performance right so that's one limitation all right and so if you're going to watch this video, this is where he starts predicting. But let's go ahead and see what the um, what the current data looks like using the uh, current data up to 20 September. So today's the 22nd. Um, the market is open while I'm recording this. Uh, at the end of this video, I want to predict the 21st of September, which is already closed. So we're going to stop our data at 20 September. And we're going to do the same thing and train a model based off of the same date range, but going all the way into here and doing 2020, 09, 20. All right, so we're going to uh, create a model again, and then I will cut when it's finished. So I'll show you what it looks like. See, it started. It's a larger sample size now. And I will cut back when this is done training. All right, so uh, that took about three minutes. And again, we have our TensorFlow completed model. So we can um, check, you know, show the, show the output of that data now. So um, in his video, computer science's video, he did a great job of making what's called robust code where you're not hard, um, except for the dates above, you're not hard coding anything. So you can just keep running the code and uh, the size will grow as you, you know, change the code. So let's run this again. All right, and so this is now with current data and what you'll see is, right, we stopped around here. And uh, this is COVID. 
So you can see that the predictions didn't check the COVID all the way down. And then it stopped before its huge increase. And then it is tracking its down again. And so what this really is, though, is that to use this. So this is a cool graph, right? Clickbait, I get it. But what it doesn't show is an actual trading strategy. And that's where um, machine learning kind of has a disadvantage. So what you would have to do is run this code the day before, the second the closing prices are posted on Panda's data reader. And then in the morning, hope if you see if it, the prediction is higher than what it closed at, right? The prediction model says it's going to go up the next day. You're going to have to put a trade order in right away in the morning. Um, if you have level two trading access for my day traders, maybe this may be advantageous. But um, if this predicts it's going to go up, then the futures may have already increased the price and you might not be able to get in. So be very cautious on what we say when we say predictive modeling. Um, and now we can predict a price now. So like I said, the sample data goes to the 20th of September, right? That's what we did up here, the 20th of September. Now we're going to get the same data for the 21st, right? We're just gonna get one day yesterday for me recording this video and see what the predicted price was. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, I'm not sure what that warning is, but this is saying that it is, uh, oh, sorry, let me change this back to um, this should be back to this one right here so it matches the model because that would represent a significant drop right $31 when it's currently over 100 so let's run this cell again okay so this is saying $106 that's what it's predict predicted the 21st of September being right so now let's get the actual quote for yesterday's actual closing right the start and end date is the 21st so this is real data and let's see what it represents so 110 so you can do you can think about it like this how accurate is this machine learning video so 110 minus 106 so about four dollars off but divide that into 106 and it's about 3.7 or four percent roughly off so that's pretty considerable if you're going to implement a day trading strategy however if you did this and you normalize the data maybe this will just tell you if it's going up or down right so maybe don't look at the predictive qualities of whether 110 is accurate or 106 is the prediction maybe look at it as if it is it going up tomorrow or is it coming down and that's where machine learning right now in my opinion can really help people is hey is this have a does history show that tomorrow it's going to go down so, uh, you know, maybe not focus on the 106 as your buy price or your sell price, but the up and down prediction might be more important. All right. So um, for the next couple of days, so when today closes, the stock market closes and Pandas has the closing price for today, I will run the code and see if it's telling me it will go up and then see tomorrow if it goes up. And then we can truly answer whether machine learning can really predict stock market prices. So um, on my next machine learning video, we'll reassess and see how well it did. But um, for the faithful subscribers, the next video on my channel is episode 100. So please subscribe to my channel so you can see a tour of how I plan to keep building Shane, my digital assistant, and what I think in my head is an end goal of what it will look like. 
So I'm hoping that that video, uh, I can share it with mentors and senior Python programmers and uh, maybe get a, a lot of advice so I know if I'm going in the right direction. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment, and make sure you go watch computer science video for an awesome explanation of all the code you saw here. So thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.